How about this, Avery? One of three teams in NCAA basketball with the same starting lineup in every game. Could you have imagined having that at Alabama? And not only that, this year in particular, to have the same lineup with all of the different uh, issues that teams had to go through, wow, how lucky are they to have the same lineup? I can only imagine have the same lineup. Matt Painter, meanwhile, speaking of uh, having COVID affect his team, he's practiced every day, he said. He hasn't missed a practice. All right, here we go. And Al Niverson once said, who's talking about practice? <laughs> <laughs> You're a Philly guy. <laughs> Brent Hampson will toss it up in the mean green. He'll control the tip as we start things off. Man to man defense. You see that they double Hamlet almost immediately. He's going to be harassed. Eric Hunter is such a great defender, and he's on him right there. And that was a coaching decision in terms of a game plan to start the game. Matt Painter realizes that North Texas got off to a 17-0 start in the Conference USA final against Western Kentucky, and the reason why, it was Hamlet. So they trapped Hamlet and forced, trying to force the ball out of his hands. Jaden Ivey hit four threes in the Big Ten tournament, the highest total for him on the year, and he converts one right out of the gate. I am so excited, and I know you are, Tom. See this young kid, he can really shoot the ball. He has started the last 12 games, counting this one, averaging 14 points per game during that time. Again, Hunter is on Hamlet, and he knocks the ball away. He loves those floaters. Hunter finds Ivy again, and this time short off the front of the rim. And the rebound is tipped around, and it's controlled by the Mean Green. Rebound is going to be a big part of this game, especially for North Texas, because their lack of size especially against the two big fellas for Purdue. Here's Simmons backing his way, and he's done a nice job against big men recently, and he feeds Bell, cutting him on the baseline. We're talking about one of the most experienced teams in college basketball with North Texas. I think they're ranked 24th in terms of experience in the country. So they, Simmons have seen those double teams before. Gillis from the corner, that one's too strong, and the rebound by Hamlet. Purdue, meanwhile, on the other side, Avery, has some of the least amount of experience in college basketball. But those freshmen, they're becoming sophomores pretty quickly. Ivy with some good hands, the save by McBride. McBride to Bell, and Bell off the back of the iron. And the rebound is pulled down by Williams. Williams with 10 double doubles so far this season. Hunter, short jumper, no good. And Hamlet's been running out those uh, rebounds. Yeah, also, Coach McCaslin, this is what North Texas does from a strategy standpoint. They love to pick one guy that they want to force to shoot three point shots and stay home on everybody else. And you can tell that they've identified that they're going to go under on Hunter. Mm -hmm. Puts it on the deck. High steps to the basket. He's able to get it in. It's his second bucket already. It's a one-point lead for the Mean Green. Yeah, you're talking about a guy in Bell that really got off to a slow start uh, in the last game. You know, he was one for ten from the field in that Conference USA Finals until he made a big three at the end of the game. And what did Coach say? He said, I told him to just keep on shooting. But the steal in the paint. Comes Reese, sidewinding up the far sideline. Bell again, reverse layup, and a tough one and an end one. Well, I'm glad Coach McCaslin wasn't near him because he loves to tackle these players. <laughs> <laughs> and I just love when players make a move and then they utilize the basket. And he went to the other side of the basket. Nice reverse layup. That's how you really neutralize shot blocking from a bigger guy that's coming over to support from the weak side. Well, he'll go to the free throw line. Edie is in. Williams is out, and the free throw is good. It's a five-point lead and a 7-0 run, or excuse me, four-point lead and a 7-0 run for the Mean Green. A little bit of a press here from North Texas. They're running the point. To Ivy, covered by Hamlet. Edie trying to post inside. The bottom.
Bogdanovich is open for three from the sideline. It's good. That's a good sign. He was cool in the last game of the Big Ten tournament. But that's one of those situations where Edie's not going to get an assist, but, but he drew so much attention around him. Purdue did a nice job of moving the ball to the weak side, but that's a, an assist for the big fella because of all of the attention that he gets. And Edie is in a little early. Williams picked up the foul. There are times when he gets into foul trouble. Matt Painter sometimes has to be a little patient with him. Reese with the shot clock at five. Pull-up jumper is good. Nothing but net over Stefanovic. I know I keep referring back to uh, their last game, but Reese was one of the reasons why they got off to such a great start. He was two for two mm -hmm. early in the game from behind the three-point line. He was struggling. He had a little bit of a right hand issue, and now he's um, he's fully healthy. Stavanovic tries another three. This one is short. He'll get back on defense with Ivy. Reese got away with the travel. Finds Simmons underneath. Reese for three. Oh, short. Tipped into the hands of Edie. Edie's seven foot four. He is just massive inside. And he wants it one on one with Simmons. Kept his pivot foot. Didn't get the angle though. And Gillis to the floor is fouled. It looks like by Murray. Well, the Mean Green off to a good start against the Boilermakers. Little pull up Jay and a three point lead. basketball as we've come to find out is such a small community and as we prepared for this ball game AJ Ross we found out that Matt Painter and uh, Grant McCaslin they kind of know each other from way back when Grant was in the Juco's you're absolutely right Tom they have a friendship a mutual respect that's really been forged over the years they haven't gone head to head very often but Painter actually got one of his first recruits from McCaslin back when McCaslin was the head coach at Midland Junior College now they have a mutual respect, as I mentioned, and Painter said he's going to have his hands full tonight yeah. with McCaslin calling the shots on the other end of the floor. And when I asked McCaslin the same question, he was like, look, I made it very clear to my guys who you're up against tonight. Yes. No doubt about that. And one thing that Grant McCaslin said that he learned when Matt Painter recruited one of his players, that he was going to use that player. So anytime he asks again, he would swing somebody his way. Another three out of bounds for Purdue. And also, what, what I love about uh, Coach McCaslin, what he said on our call, is that they're really serious about winning this game. They're not just here to part, get a participation trophy. <laughs> they want to advance. Mm -hmm. And they've gotten off to a good start. They're, they're here to play. Yeah, up by three, Hamlet with the ball has four rebounds from a defensive standpoint, running the point. A lot of times you see the ball in Reese's hands up top. And Hamlet again off the screen, McBride. Good defense by Purdue. Hunter is so good defensively for the Boilermakers. Shot clock is under 10. That happens often for the Mean Green. Bell thought about launching. Shot clock at two into the paint. Let's it go off the glass. He made the right decision. Yeah, and especially the shot fake. I mean, just a fundamentally sound move. Went inside, played off the two feet. Could have made a short pass, but he was up against the clock. Really good decision. That's what this time of the year is all about, making really quality decisions. Brandon Newman in for the first time. He's number five for Purdue and a foul on Edie. Boy, Bell is playing with some confidence, isn't he? Yeah, shots fake split the defense. Edie came over. He was a little too late. But Bell is playing with just some extraordinary confidence here early in the game. And by the way, speaking of Edie, uh, Travion Williams still on the bench. He has the one foul. A little message, you think, being sent by Matt Painter? Absolutely. Uh, Sometimes coaches, even with your best player, that's that's the way that you get the attention of the rest of the team. Yeah, Trey told us this week, he said, I understand, you know, from a foul standpoint, he goes, I have been trying to make sure I stay out of foul trouble. And I think the game against Ohio State, he had such a great second half, he saw what he could do on the floor. Thompson for three. It's good. Purdue needed that. It's a two-point game. And that's what we were talking about in our open. That's how Edie has improved as a passer. We know that he can finish around the basket, but as a passer, he's um, that was a nice on-time, on-target pass. Well, passing is certainly an important part for the Purdue Boilermakers big men. McBride for three. McBride answers. It's good. They're five for their last six. And it's 14-9, Mean Green. Their 
14 and a half to play in the first half. The winner faces the winner of Villanova and Winthrop. That game is after this one. Edie can corral it, and it's out of bounds. It'll remain Purdue basketball. Watch live games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with NCAA March Madness Live. Watch now at NCAA.com slash March Madness or download the app today. I don't know about you, Coach, but I had that app on the last couple of days. I watched you last night up at uh, Indiana with your two games. Those are some good ones. Yeah, did I say anything? Because, you know, Brad Nestler and Steve Lavin, you know, those guys are not really <laughs> that unselfish. Uh, <laughs> he tried the hook shot, no good, gets his own rebound and lost it toward the baseline. Wonderful time with those guys last night. Yeah, you guys did a fantastic job. Edie's working hard, isn't he? He's working hard. And one of North Texas' strategies defensively in the post is trying to make sure they do their work early and not allow Edie to get that deep post catch. Mm. And if he ends up being deep, they want to front the post. All right. The shot clock is reset to 20. Simmons, by the way, has two fouls. That's important for the Mean Green. That's partly why Usman is in the ball game. Bell will pick up the foul there for Grant McCaslin's team. And to the free throw line will go Stefanovic. He did not score in the Big Ten tournament. First shot is good. House of Highlights, the reel is back for season three. Host Kenny Beecham sits with top athletes to react to the biggest moments of their careers. Watch now on Facebook Watch. Yeah, Stevanovic didn't score. He was 0 for 4 from, from 3. And so he's looking to be more aggressive, trying to play from the basket outside to the three-point line instead of just being a three-point shooter. He shoots 83% from the line, so that's a good place for him to be. Three-point game, the being great on top. Hamlet, he's got some rebounds. He doesn't have points yet. And out of bounds go the mean green. McBride stepped on the sideline. It'll be Purdue basketball. All right, here comes Travion Williams back in the game. Now, we both watched it, the Big Ten game against Ohio State. They wound up losing it in overtime. But I haven't seen a second half like that from a big man in a long, long time. He put on the clinic. <laughs> he put on the show. I saw a couple of Hakeem Olajuwon fake left shoulder and right shoulder mm. moves. He was very impressive. Stavonovich from the free throw line got the roll. They played on the court on the other side on Unity here at Lucas Oil, the Big Ten. But he looked like he was familiar with the rims there. Yeah, Stavonovich just has a bounce to his to his game right now. And he's coming off screen. That was a nice little walk away, a New York screen, mm. what you call it. And when you have a guy that's a screener like Williams, uh, his man really doesn't want to help as much. Usman. The turnaround hook shot, it's good. Three point lead. Purdue, by the way, that last bucket was the first two point bucket for the Boilermakers. Stefanovic catch and shoot off the front of the rim. Gillis runs down the rebound. Stefanovic feeds to the corner. That's an offensive foul. Texas maintaining the three-point lead, 16-13. Yeah, the energy, you can feel it here at Lucas Oil. North Texas is hoping to win its first ever NCAA game. Avery, can North Texas continue to shoot 70% like they are so far? Yes, they can, and you have weak traps and weak gaps here. And Bell is getting through there gaps and, and when you're out of position and you're late the worst thing you can do is reach miss the steal and now the offense is playing five on floor uh, bell is really making purdue pay the price for their uh, defense that is totally out of position on a couple of those plays all right so i know you can appreciate this five percent body fat when he arrived at north texas bell i mean does not look like it's five percent right now he is a uh, a jacked guy. I, I was at five and a half percent body fat in 1999. Don't ask me, Tom, what my body fat is now. I think I was at that in 1970 when I was two years old. <laughs> Three point lead for North Texas. I'm working on it, Tom. <laughs> 
to McBride for three off the front of the rim, no good. Rebound by Gillis. He works so hard coming from the outside to the inside. Now let's see if Purdue can get it. their offensive mojo going. Stefanovic goes inside. Williams backing in against Guzman and Williams. That is a beautiful touch and that's a good sign. It's a one point game. Nice move by Williams. Compact move. He's really good. Going over his left shoulder. North Texas decided to play him with single coverage. So we'll see how long that lasts. They asked him about his play inside where he learned it. He said it was my dad. He gave me a ball early in my life and just made sure I was inside instead of outside. Ball is tipped away. Shot clock is at six. Hamlet against Gillis. Goes to the corner for Murray for three. And see, this is why Hamlet is so dangerous because, you know, he's rebounding the basketball tonight. He's, he he's, hasn't scored, but he has, you know, a couple of assists, one turnover, but he's just playing, has a really nice floor game. Well, they double Williams and he throws it away. And now power behind the numbers presented by Powerade. All right, so Travion Williams, this is what we talk about, about him being in the paint. Post up numbers, he's third best in the country. And he's third behind a guy from Iowa that potentially could be the player of the year this year. Mm, he's pretty special, Luka Garza. Texas, eight for 12 so far, two of five from beyond the arc. Hamlet looking for a screen. Again, it's Hunter, who did not make the defensive player of the year or list in the Big Ten. He said, you know, I just kind of went with it. He chuckled a little bit. He probably should have been on the team. And now he's running the point. Nice defense by Purdue trying to force. That foul is going to go against McBride for North Texas. Yeah, and see, you just have a contrast in styles here. North Texas uh, loves to come from the strong side, corner shooter, which rarely happens even in college basketball now because that's the easiest three in, in basketball. Some teams will allow that drive mm. to funnel into the big guy. Hunter, the batting the basketball. Gets it to Williams. Williams back to Hunter. He's kind of caught. Keeps his pivot foot. Good man-to-man -man defense by North Texas. Ivy, long range three. Too strong. Williams battling for the rebound, but it's pulled down by the Mean Green. And when you're having trouble like that, guys got to cut back door. You can't continue to go towards half court and allow yourself to be denied. Gotta use some sort of a pressure release. Hamlet again scoreless in the paint, cut off by Hunter. Shot clock winds under 10. McBride got separation. Stavanovic was trying to draw the charge of the rebound again by Gillis, who's been busy on the boards. That's number five for him. Another errant pass. That's the second one. Now you can see North Texas allowed him to, a couple of possessions ago to go one on one. He scored the ball. And Coach Grant McCaslin said, hey, enough of this. We're going to scrap that game plan. We're double teaming the big fella. And they forced him into two consecutive turnovers on his post ups. Well, that means that Edie will check back in. Williams goes to the sidelines. Grant McCaslin, 44 years old over a program that had five straight conference losing seasons. You want to talk about an unbelievable coaching job? Matt Painter in his 16th oh, year. Man. <laughs> Big Ten coach of the year four times. And he was pretty interesting and lively on the Zoom call. I thought he was great. As the shot clock is under 10, Hamlet to the free throw line. Goes to Reese. Reese from 17 off the side of the rim. And Murray gets the rebound. Reese again feeds it along to Usman and a foul on 80. Seven fifty nine to play here in the first half. Free throws when we return. The mean green up by four. The L I.
IV is the head coach, women's coach at Notre Dame. Her team did not make it first time since 95. She took over uh, as the head coach this year, and they have a lot of bright stars in the future. One of the good things is she'll get a chance to see her son, Jaden Ivy, play for Purdue. Uh, and AJ, Jaden is uh, learned at the foot of his mom and also a lot of those great players at Notre Dame. He did indeed. He fell in love with the game because of his mother, who was an All-American point guard for the legendary Notre Dame coach, Muffet McGraw. His mom helped lead Notre Dame to three 16, or sweet 16 appearances and a national title. And then she was drafted by the Indiana Fever when she found out she was pregnant with Jaden. She played her rookie season pregnant, guys, mm. starting 26 games and averaging 22 minutes. So I just have to say, women athletes are amazing! Exclamation point. Uh, really, really incredible story. And she had Jaden on her radio show uh, a couple weeks ago, and she talked about the players that Jaden looked up to, and all of them were former Notre Dame players. So. Says a whole lot for him as well. Notre Dame women players. Says a lot about him too and about how mom did. All right, so two missed free throws. And it's a four point North Texas lead. A little pressure again by the Mean Green. A little 2 2 1 press by North Texas. Falling back into a man to man. This game is being played at North Texas. Place. Purdue is just kind of out of sync right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, smiled by Reese. And one of the things that Coach Matt Painter talked about, and this is his favorite slogan with his team, is do your job. Whatever that job is. And Williams' job is not to turn the ball over three times, especially against double teams. So. Probably going to have a long talk about that at halftime. This is a Purdue team that has generally started slow in many games, but really comes out like gangbusters in the second half. Edie with the pass to Gillis has it blocked away. Loose ball. And it's run down by Brandon Newman, then lost. And here comes Reese into the open floor, switches hands, and lays it in. And it seems from a strategic standpoint, when Williams is in, North Texas wants to bring their double teams from the free throw line against Edie. They want to trap him a little bit more from the baseline. So a difference in, in strategy. Six point lead. And Ivy and one. That was an athletic play. When you say somebody was born to score, yes. that's, it. that's not an exaggeration. This kid was born to score. And I know Coach E, she was, she was really, Coach Ivy was really excited about that move. So he'll go to the free throw line, 73%. He was inserted into the starting lineup when Stefanovic went out with COVID. They missed eight games and they decided to keep him in the starting lineup. He continues to evolve. We asked Matt Painter, how did you wrestle him away from South Bend? He said, well, I just kept on recruiting him. Every single game he played, I would be there. Well, you got to get in there early and, and stay late. A lot of times when, you, when you're the most consistent coach that, that, that attends those games, players and their families, they remember. And Edie with a big time block coming from the backside. Three point game, Ivy. Trying to get to the basket again. Two more off the back of the iron and the rebound by Bell. Now, Edie has 28 blocks this year, so when you drive and the big fella presents himself, mm -hmm. he may need to look for an outlet pass. Yeah, he may even just misdirect it <laughs> if he doesn't block it. When you 7 4, he's 7 8 when he puts up his hands. Now there's Hamlet's first bucket of the night. And it makes it a six point game. Hamill it averages about 15 per game. He has 44 double figure games in his career. Edie posting up inside, has to get out. Newman for three, no good. Weak side rebound for the Mean Green. But yeah, with Purdue, it's basically just one pass and a shot. I think they want to be, move the ball, body movement, ball movement. Move North Texas defense. North Texas can defend you all night long, and even better when it's just one pass in a shot. Yeah, if they did it uh, with four games in four days in the Conference USA tournament, 
As Hamlet swings it to Bell, outside for Murray. Back to Hamlet again, and he got it again. Back to back threes for JV on Hamlet. It's a six point game. Dad loves it. But when, you, when you're talking about Murray, he's a former walk on that earned a scholarship. And if you want to keep the coach's attention, make the right play. Downtown Indianapolis was alive and kicking today as we headed over to Lucas Oil Stadium. It was nice to see folks milling around, getting set to watch some uh, games today. And there have been some great games. Our tournament summary. How about what Oral Roberts did to the number two team, number two seed, Ohio State 75-72, a final in overtime, first win since 74. And boy, Mackey, three of the four games have gone into overtime, including that one. Huge win, uh, which would be an understatement for Oral Roberts. And, man, I heard they do a lot of praying at Oral Roberts. So, <laughs> <laughs> their prayers were answered. Oh. Our prayer changes things. It sure changed the outcome of that game. Naismith was unbelievable. Shooting the basketball, not only from beyond the arc, but also getting inside. Shot clock is at five. Williams back in his way in. Tough shot, Uzmah. Uzman was able to misdirect it. And look like North Texas caught a break there because when Williams spent towards the baseline, looked like he got hit a little bit on the hand. Here's the replay. Good spin. No. Good no call. Yeah, then they called the over the back on Williams, so that'll be his second foul. He'll take a seat. Matt Painter not happy with Brent Hampson, who made that call. James Breeding. Byron Jarrett, Brent Hampson, the officials for today's ball game. That was a really good piece of officiating. Mm. Finds Hamlet. Hamlet picked up by Aaron Wheeler. Shot clock under 10. Hamlet, there's that floater. He shoots more floaters than anybody in the country, and he gets his own rebound with the tip. And the reason why he gets downhill is they'll bring the big guy up and then the guard will change his foot position because he thinks it's a pick and roll and then the big guy slips out of it and he gets down here particularly when he goes to his left hand that's a big time move 17 footer it's good nothing but that and then that's their straight open isolation where they don't bring anybody up and they allow hamlet to dance and get in his uh, spicy move there at the free throw line. 11 point lead, Ivy with a reverse layup. That is an uh, athletic move to make it a nine point game. North Texas basically has neutralized Purdue's big guys. Shocking, this, isn't it? Yeah, this game is going to be dictated by Purdue's guard play. Their guards are going to have to step up. And the other thing, too, coach, is the fact that Simmons is on the bench with two fouls for North Texas. So Uzman is playing well, number 33 for the Bean Green. Shot clock under 10 again. Hamlet lets it fly. Edie with the rebound. And here comes Ivy. He glides up the floor. He's speedy. Stavanovich, elbow jumper. Too strong, and a whistle blows. Well, back and forth on the last two possessions. You can see the athleticism. First from Hamlet. Works his way toward the free throw line, lets it go. But then how about Ivy, a freshman coming of age? Well, how about that? Wisconsin jumping out to that lead over North Carolina. The winner of that one will face Baylor, the number one seed. They didn't have a hard time against Hartford after the first few minutes of that ball game. Yeah, Baylor just led by an outstanding player of the year candidate, Jared Butler. Mm -hmm. Kid from right outside of New Orleans. Um, watched him play a lot in high school. You follow those kids outside of New Orleans? Yeah, I follow him a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> know a little bit about uh, Jared Butler. I recruited him hard uh, when he was in high school. Mm. Well, Stavanovich to the free throw line, made the first, and feeds the rim on the second one. All right, so 29-22, a seven-point game. North Texas is playing with confidence, four of eight from beyond the arc. But again, it's just a seven-point game, and Williams has barely played for Purdue. But as you said, they're neutralizing the big men. Yeah, and it seems like North Texas is basically taking turns. Uh, either it's, you know, uh, Hamlet or uh, Bell taking over the offense. Crossover by McBride. Uzman underneath. Locked away by Edie. 
Guzman gets it back. McBride just throws it up with the shot clock winding down. I think they may have to look at that one. I thought he got it off in time, though, Coach. But again, we may have to either text uh, Usman and say, look, we can't, he can't hear us from here. <laughs> you cannot try to shoot that ball over either. It's hard to finish those shots. When the guy, when he puts his hands up, as we said, he's almost, what, eight feet tall at that point. He's a monster is what he is. <laughs> All right, so they're going to review if the if the shot was good or not. They're going to say no basket. All right, so let's take another look. No, it did not leave his hand. It was close. It was close. All right, so they made the right call on that. And of course, uh, they can review that. 2:39 to play, first half. Where Texas on top by seven. And Wheeler tries to, and he draws the contact. So Usman, just like uh, Simmons, is going to fall into a little foul trouble. That's number two on him. And this is one of the players Coach Painter was saying that he's playing with more confidence, and he needs more out of him. Stanford, Connecticut kid. Out of Brewster Academy. First free throw. It's good. Unbelievably delicious Coca-Cola cherry vanilla. Something this good should be out of bounds. But it isn't. One. Purdue from the free throw line. As Wheeler releases is seven for seven. That's certainly a, a huge jump from the game against Ohio State. He shoots 52% from the free throw line. Just doesn't have enough opportunities. I didn't want to jinx <laughs> Purdue faithful. Matt Painter talked about this, how cool it was during the Big Ten tournament in Indianapolis to hear the fans. And I believe Wheeler may be called for the foul there. He is. And that's only their 15 foul. Not a big deal. North Texas is a big dribble handoff team. So when Bell or Simmons when they don't have anything and they can't drive to the basket, they'll dribble handoff with a guard just to try to get those guards turning them, turning the corner. And one off the screen, picked up by Stavanovic. He wants Uzman to come up. Here's the slip. Bell over the top of Gillis for three, in and out. And Uzman with the rebound and the foul. Up on AT&T at the half sports and highlights and the latest NCAA tournament news that's all coming up on AT&T at the half. But doesn't it seem like when Bell shoots the ball, it just looks good. It looked good from our vantage point. He was right on target. Shot clock is set at 20. Game clock is under two minutes to play in the first half. The number 13 seed with a five-point lead. McBride lets it fly. It's good. in this game <laughs> and even one here in the booth <laughs> yeah you loving the fact that there's left handers in the game foul is going to be called and, and north texas what they like to do is try to create confusion they'll bring their big guys up to play pick and roll with hamlet and then sometime they'll bring their guards up and their guards will pick and pop and defenses they don't really know are you trapping him? Is it a switch? I certainly saw that in Conference USA against Charles Bassey from Western Kentucky. And how well they played against him. He was the best big man in that conference. Hamlet pivots from the free throw line. Ball knocked out of bounds by Hunter with quick hands. Very good cut by Murray. Purdue did a nice job of getting a deflection, but Murray loved the movement. 1-10 to play, an eight-point lead for North Texas. Our game summary, and there's a number of stats that really stand out. I think points in the paint are huge that North Texas is outscoring Purdue right now. And also, North Texas 5 for 10 from the three-point line. Mm -hmm. You would have thought that would be reversed. Um, 
coming into this game. By the way, Edie has two fouls. So does uh, Travion Williams. That one off the mark as the shot clock was winding down. Athletic play by Edie to save that on the baseline. 7-4 doesn't always come athletic like that. Ivy, step back, 17-footer. How about that move to get free? My friends used to say um, it was a hundred-dollar move. Yeah. <laughs> That shot will go down though as he gets older, but you're right. <laughs> Hamlet working against Ivy. Hamlet, this floater blocked away by Edie. Here come the Boilermakers. Shot clock is off. Ivy will just hold it out front. But you're talking about arguably the most talented player on the floor. Independent of stats or anything is I. Mm -hmm. This kid's talent. Versatile. He makes tough shots. Off the high screen. Clock is winding down. It's down to two. He'll just let it fly. It's off the side of the rim and 80 gets the rebound, but that is the end of the first half. The number 13 seed coach has an eight-point lead over the Purdue Boilermakers. That's what Coach McCallum, McCaslin said. They're here to advance. They're not just showing up. They have, Purdue better wake up. Yep, they have never won an NCAA tournament game. They're up 32-24. The end of the half will send you to the AT&T at the half studios after these messages. You're watching the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. Back here at Indianapolis, let's take a look at the AT&T 5G first half statistics. Uh, shooting percentage for North Texas, it's been hovering right around 50% for most of the half. It's pretty amazing. They're 5 for 11 from beyond the arc, along with Avery Johnson and A.J. Ross. I'm Tom McCarthy. Coach, what happened to the big men in this game? Well, you got to give credit to where credit's due. And North Texas, they're taking care of business. They've taken care of the ball on offense, and they've taken Travion Williams out of the game when he's on offense with their defense. Yeah, he played only eight minutes in the first half. And take a look. This is the, some of the issues he had turning the ball over. Yeah, he's giving him multiple looks. I mean, they're trapping him almost by the sideline. Now here comes the trap with three defenders. And now here's an early pre-trap, and they're just confusing him, and he's going, turning the ball over. So he picked up two fouls, so that's why he sat a lot. Plus, he was ineffective. So eight minutes, two points, three turnovers, two fouls. Edie has two fouls as well, and he hasn't scored. So the big men haven't really been involved. And then on the other side, Simmons, the big man for the Mean Green, he hasn't really got involved. How about this defense for the Mean Green? Coach, to start things off, doing a little matchup. A little matchup, and now they're back in the man. Hunter leading the point for Purdue. Same starting five for both teams. Hunter, a little hesitation to the corner. Gillis shot fake. Shot clock is at two. Pull up jumper is no good. Williams lost it out of bounds. And let's see who it, who touched it last. And it's going to be Purdue basketball. A.J. Ross, what did you find out at halftime? Well, Tom, you know going into this game, Coach Grant McCaslin told us he wanted to limit the ball inside and put pressure on the passers, and clearly his guys did just that in the first. And you also noted along with Coach the difference in the paint. So McCaslin says he wants to keep this Purdue team second-guessing in the second half, and they have to control the tempo. Meanwhile, Purdue coach Matt Painter says they have to keep it simple, especially their post players making passes, kicking them back out to the perimeter when they're, when they're double teams. That's part of their six turnovers from the first half. They have to go back to what got them here. Keep it simple. Well, simply put, Gillis was dominating the offensive boards on that particular play after the missed backdoor layup. And this is what got uh, Purdue back in the game when they were down against Ohio State in the quarterfinals of the Big Ten. It wasn't just Williams, it was Gillis offensive rebounding. And they stormed back and outscored Ohio State in their last game, 41 to 23 in the second half. That's exactly right. They do play better in the second half. Gillis converts. One thing that I, I think has stood out in this game, and, and I think we noticed it during the Big Ten season, Gillis's motor for a big guy is really humming along. Five-point game. Simmons with the screen. He doesn't shoot the three. Hamlet to the corner. Reese for three. No good. Simmons tips it out, and the Mean Green will get control again. 
Simmons is just a really smart player. You're talking about a guy that's he shot 60% from the field all four years that he's been in college. So that means he takes quality shots. McBride with a quality shot. He catches the three. It's an eight-point game. Yeah, there's a lot of North Texas fans here, but this place is dominated by the Purdue fans right now, which you would imagine. 65 miles from the Purdue campus, which looked very weird with the blue floor. Ivy, he's fouled on the floor. One thing about the Beaton Green coach, they are confident when they get the ball. Yeah, and Reese, you know, he's got that assist, but again, the ball is moving from side to side. Here's that last foul. They got Hamlet. Got clock reset to 20. Williams swings it to Ivy, cutting to the basket. That's knowing where your teammates are right there. And what a nice move, switching to your opposite hand in that situation with Ivy goes into the paint. They played him to shoot it with his right hand. He switched to the left. Very athletic move. No, he's got 10. Williams did tell us he does think pass first. McBride again for three. And again! Splash down! <laughs> we, we used to play on the playground. We had a quote that said, if you reach, we teach. <laughs> <laughs> that last time, Purdue reached, got out of position, and uh, oh! North Texas taught him on that play. Answers with the, his full body off the glass on that one. It's a seven point game. Again, the number 13 seed, North Texas, out of Conference USA. Only the fourth time they've been to the NCAA tournament. They've never won an NCAA tournament game, taking on Purdue. Three straight Sweet 16 appearances for the Boilers. Hamlin's runner no good. Williams with an easy rebound. Nice defense by Purdue. They're really trying to keep Hamlet on the sideline and not allow him to turn the corner and operate in the middle of the floor. Hunter tries to answer again as he slides under Simmons and lays it in. And a timeout calls. Purdue is within five. How about this? Hunter took it right to the big man, found some daylight, and laid it in. Here, number 13, North Texas, has a five-point lead over Purdue. Do you sense that Purdue stabilized things a little bit? And what I was going to say, Tom, after they finish looking at the Bleacher Report, they're yeah. probably going to CBSSports.com and looking at how Purdue has eight points in the paint yeah. this <laughs> half. <laughs> that's, that's what they're doing. And that is an adjustment for the Boilermakers. <laughs> See it popped up on your screen. Reese for three, and he got it. Well, they've had three threes in this half, and they are money from every side. A lot of times in college, compared to the next level, teams don't want to run the same play over and over again. But that play has given Purdue's defense difficulty all night long. The same size pick and roll. Stefanovic stepped out of, out of bounds. Yeah, so, it's, you know, when you bring a big guy up there, teams really know how to play it, but the same size, they don't know whether they're switching. And when you have a lack of communication, that frees Reese up for those three-point shots. All right, so tell me, uh, NBA, when you were a head coach, would you run the same plays compared to college? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so that's pretty good weapons there as well. Not that you didn't have bad weapons in Alabama, Colin Sexton. Yeah. Eight-point lead. 53% from beyond the arc, well above the average for the year for North Texas. And oh, the off baseline, Bell, a little too strong, the ball tipped out, and Hunter was there. I think that surprised Simmons that it came off the rim that hard. Ivy, a burst to the basket, we try to jam and he could have laid it in, he does lay it in. It looked like he got grabbed a little bit. Maybe, by the maybe. Yeah. Broke his momentum. He has 12. He's 5 of 11 from the floor. Again, just a freshman, but for Purdue fans, evolving right before their eyes this year. Bell takes the handoff from Simmons. In North Texas, they're, they're saying they're going to take their chances with everybody else. But right now, you know, with Williams and Edie, they've combined for two points. Yeah, the big men have not had an impact. Tried to lay it in the first time, cut it, but got it in the second time. 
That's how a big fella can get in the game. Offensive rebounding. He's stronger than everybody on the court. Probably all five of the North Texas players. <laughs> Nine <laughs> second chance points of this half for Purdue. And sometimes you just need a little something to get yourself going. Simmons back in his way in. Hook shot over the top of Williams. No good. Gillis. He rips it down. He's got to be careful. Not getting a technical foul. He's got Simmons got hit on the arm. Hunter can't convert. And no. a foul by Williams. It's a little ticky tack foul. His engine is starting to rev a little bit more, though. He's not the little engine that could. He's the big muscle man that can dominate inside on any given day that ends in a while. This is getting more and more interesting with each passing minute. It's a four-point lead for North Texas. And now, the Affleck unexpected play of the game. This move by freshman uh, Jay Nivey. You read the book Good to Great, Tom? I have. You know, it's a good move. And he came up short, but I thought it was a great finish when <laughs> he was a little bit embarrassed by missing the dunk. And I love when freshmen, they don't put their head down. You know, normally he would make that dunk and complete that play, but it didn't happen. But I thought it was great that he came back and finished it. Good to great, Tom. Good to great. Mom certainly liked it. Take a look at the percentage of minutes played by each class and how different it is. 79% senior dominated for North Texas. 47% freshman dominated for Purdue. And that's why North Texas, they really don't get rattled. Excellent drive by McBride. And McBride double figures in four consecutive games. He was three straight in the Conference USA tournament. North Texas, they don't turn the ball over much, unlike Purdue on this play. And Reese going right to the rim, lays it in. Only three turnovers for North Texas so far. Compared to eight for Purdue. that mom's not only going to be happy but the boilermaker fans are going to be happy excellent pass with two hands he was balanced williams was balanced and he threw it uh, with some zip on it and ivy was able to knock down a wide open three. he leads all scores he has 15. it seems like ivy's going to have to score 25 it, to 25 it does for to have an opportunity to be successful to shot clock is under 10 hamlet working against hunter to the corner, Bell lets it fly, shot clock at one, off the side of the rim, and Williams, an easy rebound for the Boilermakers. That's one of those plays where Williams, if you don't have it in your hands and it's not a clean catch, probably needs to drop it. Hamlet's going to pick up his third foul, Coach, and here are the last uh, couple buckets. Yeah, sometimes the passer has to, the receiver has to save the passer in that situation, it was Ivy, but now, the big fella got it across court. Nice skip pass. Ivy in rhythm. Who's model check in? Simmons is out. Hamlet's also out for North Texas. Meanwhile, Edie comes in and Williams goes out for Purdue. Wheeler back in. Here's Thompson for three. Got it. Isaiah Thomas, Isaiah Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> Shoots 37% from the three. Zion Mill in the end. Yeah, his brother, PJ, grad assistant, three year starter. And that three pointer couldn't have come at a better time. And now a foul called on the other ends. It'll go against Thompson. It'll be interesting also with Coach Painter if he decides to play. You know his twin towers together. He did it for one or two possessions. He did it. it. It was the first time this year when we asked Williams about it. He laughed at it as they go underneath. Reese with his back to the basket has it swatted away by Ivy. That's the athleticism that we were talking about. Where you go from good to great. Thompson gave up his dribble in an awkward spot. Hunter, little jab step. Ivy to the corner. Wheeler for three. Too strong. Anyway, back to that story we asked uh, Williams about. It. He 
started laughing and he gives Edie so much credit for his maturation this year because he's so big and so strong. He said, yeah, that's the only time we've done it this year. He said, and I said, well, you kind of caught him with an awkward high low. He goes, yeah, I did. <laughs> also love Williams' leadership style. He says he, he leads by meeting with his teammates one-on-one. Yep. -on -one. That's very mature. Nice pass. Oh! Giving them good minutes tonight with Simmons in foul trouble. And, and North Texas had really good practice against Western Kentucky, against Charles Bassey, another outstanding shot blocker. And when that shot blocker comes over, you can have correct spacing to make that short pass. Ivy with the land, the Giants count it. Yeah, you can flex if you want. And he can make this a one point game. He, he's wearing number 23. I wouldn't dare compare him to the greatest <laughs> of all time, but that was an exceptional move for such a young player. Our game summary in the second half, Purdue is scoring on 75% of its offensive possessions. They're shooting the ball better. Ivy's got 17 total points. And this has been in the Ivy show, really, in the comeback. Coach. And I think at, at halftime there, Jesper was, we just don't want to force feed the ball in the wings. I need our perimeter the guys to step up. Okay, he's about to get a free throw off this timeout because Usman picked up his third foul for North Texas. So he can make this a one-point game. Yeah, right now Purdue's on an eight to two run. And you know, again, you know, 22 points in the paint for Purdue. Mm -hmm. And quite a few of those, over half of those have come in the second half. Absolutely. And again, it's not even Williams. He's more of the passer out of the paint. It's everybody else getting to the basket. You just wonder if North Texas maybe will go back for one possession and allow, you know, the big guy Simmons to play one on one and not allow those wide open threes because they're double teaming the post. Or they're just going to have to come out of their rotations a lot more. Absolutely. Purdue has certainly picked up its game on the free throw line compared to the, the matchup against Ohio State. 15 of 26 against Ohio State. Ivy converts there to make this a one-point game. They're perfect from the line today. And Hamlet going right to the rim. <laughs> Man, every time, you know, Purdue inches a little bit closer, you know, Matt Bride or Hamlet, somebody's answers the call. That's what happens when you have a veteran experience team. And in the NCAA tournament, that can not only give you an upset, can also move you deeper into the tournament as a foul is going to be called, I believe, on Simmons. I hope they're going to call it on McBride. The big red balls are back. John Cena and Nicole Byer host brand new episodes of Wipeout on TBS. Boom is all the all new season on a whole new network, April 1st on TBS. You know what my dream is, Tom? What's that? One day I'm going to be allowed to read a book. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we've got a bunch of them for you to try on. Here's Thompson in the paint. Bouncer. Paint away from the free throw line. No good. And the rebound by McBride. Here come the mean green. McBride trying to get control. And he does have that pass. Yeah, great hustle. And those shots are the ones that with long rebounds that can lead to fast breaks. It just got too fast for the mean <laughs> green. Fast. Hamlet's hovering up top, working off the screen by Reese. No, no Texas is not far from the Texas motor speed. They go pretty fast. Sometimes they do. Shot clock is at two. Hamlet oh. over the top of Edie, and he's, I think he's fouled, so he's going to get two shots. There's his pops. We made sure when you did the Conference USA tournament that you said nice things about his son, and the way he ended that game, you could do nothing but say nice things. <laughs> AJ, what do you have on his dad? Well, they have a very special bond with his father, having been there through all the ups and downs and keeping him on the right track is what Javion told us. And with all those sacrifices, in addition to his dad, his mom put in, Javion, Javion says he would not be where he is today without his parents, guys. He did not have any Division I scholarship offers coming out of high school and wound up going to two junior colleges, was going to go to Buffalo, but then transferred with James Reese, who was at Buffalo, they had gotten this friendship together, to North Texas. And boy, did that turn out to be a huge get for Coach McCaslin. 
I love that Hamlet also said he's learned from a lot of different people. He did say that. <laughs> That's said. right. But his father's been an amazing influence in his life. I just, unfortunately, uh, he wanted to give me a bear hug in the, <laughs> in the hotel in the conference USA tournament. And I just said, hey, I got to stay six feet. Uh, <laughs> Five-point ball game. Williams beats Thompson for three. And short. And Reese with the board. By the way, McBride is back in. He has 14 points of five of seven shooting. He's number one. He's in the corner in front of the North Texas bench. Now he's coming along the baseline. Loves the spots in the corner. Off the screen. And he switched there. He got it right that time. And Hamlet, the floater, shoots it more than anybody else in the country. Wow, that's a, that's a tough shot. And, and a lot of times from an analytics standpoint, that's that's a low percentage shot. But if you can make it, Coach McCaslin will take it. Seven point lead. Simmons cuts off the baseline. Williams gets his own rebound. Goes to the Try. corner. Yeah. And out of bounds. All right, so we talk about Hamlet having the shooting the most floaters in college basketball. We have the number. <laughs> He has 108 points on floaters, tops in college basketball, thanks to the folks at Synergy Sports for that. And we asked him about it, he said, well, I was always smaller than everybody else, so I had to learn how to shoot over. And it really takes the shot back out of it. Because if you get closer to the basket, especially with guys like Williams or, you know, that have the size advantage, or Edie, you can take that out of the way. That ends it off the back of the iron. Hamlet has 16. If a, if a lot of NCAA college basketball fans didn't know <laughs> Hamlet's name, they know it now. Well, they may have read a lot about it in high school, didn't realize that they may see it again at some point on the basketball floor. Boilermakers, though, do get a big bucket there to make it a six-point game. Each team with three threes in the second half. Javion Hamlet, his last three games, he's averaging 15 points in the second half. Could it be four games? Well, that floater, any indication, it sure might be. Watch this move. Making his way back to Indianapolis. Guy Tim Doyle, shout out. All the folks at HQ, <laughs> Randy Brickley, Suzanne Lee. You got everybody? <laughs> I got everybody. <laughs> Let's get back to you. <laughs> this game, it's amazing. The North Texas with a six-point lead. Reese underneath kicks it out. And now the shot clock at five, which is no big deal for the mean green. Hamlet working against Thompson. Floater again off the front of the rim, no good. And it's not a violation because it hit the rim and the rebound was taken by Purdue. And I don't know why Lee, uh, Reese didn't go out for the lead. That was a cute backdoor play. He was right at the rim. Williams held the six so far. Six rebounds to Ivy. Ivy spinning move. No good. And Hamlet, he was busy in the first half with his boards. He has six now overall. That's a makeable shot for Ivy. Just, just came up. Curling into the paint, sweeps it and lays it in. He went right by Williams. I know there's six minutes to go in the game, and there's still plenty of time. But Purdue's going to have to string together a couple of stops in a row yeah. with some quality offense. against Williams in the post. And outside of securing the defensive rebound, mm. they were successful. But there go but again, Gillis gets on the glass. He's really taking advantage of coming from the weak side with his offensive rebounding, getting it into this game. 
officials are saying, hey guys, let's go. We gotta get everybody online. That's Matt Painter's talking to Ivy. Gillis to the line. First miss of the night for Purdue. Watch live games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with NCAA March Madness Live. Watch now at NCAA.com slash March Madness or download the app today. It's unfortunate because Gillis shoots 82% from the line, so. We missed one, made one. Seven-point game, 542 to play here in the second half. North Texas has been to the NCAA tournament four times in the program's history has never won a game in the NCAA tournament. And you just wanted to hear what Purdue, you know, if, they, if North Texas gets into a pick and roll situation or some isolation situation where they try to get the ball out of Hamlet's hands, mm -hmm. he's really doing a nice job of just, you know, being a maestro and setting the table with his close team. Ivy says, get that shot out of here. I'm, I'm so glad you kept that beat. Upside. <laughs> <laughs> man. We're going to a different basketball, Avery. Got to have an alternate, just like in tennis. You don't like one ball, you use a little different one. Yeah. Tough spot to inbound from that quarter with two on the shot clock. Hamlet gets it in. Reese lets it go. No good. And Williams with a seventh rebound. That's a win for North Texas because now they're able to get back and get their defense set. Five minutes to play in the second half. Ivy for three. Got it! Yeah. It's back to a four-point game. You know one of the famous alum for Purdue? Drew Brees? Yeah. He would be happy with that shot. You had, <laughs> to, get, you had to get it in New Orleans. Uh, I, had get, I'm sorry, I had to get it. I had to get it. Who that? Who that, man? Center lost it out of bounds. It'll be Purdue basketball. The Boilermakers are within four. And the freshman Jaden Ivey with 21 points. He's not thinking too much. And he's a big player in double figures for Purdue. And we said it earlier. This is a game where he's probably got to get, you know, 25 or more points. Because North Texas is basically eliminated Williams in a lot of ways. He only has six points. I think that's tied for his career low. 21 for Ivy is a career high. Back in his way out. Shot clock under 10. Goes to the corner for Gillis. They go back up top for Hunter. Good defense. Offensive foul. Called against Hunter. Hamlet was able to step in. And sometimes, you know, you want your players to be unselfish. changed his body I said to him I said so what did you do he said I ate a lot of salads <laughs> he said he just uh, didn't eat as much junk food and he's down to 265 and you know his motor is always moving 
by the way, hats off to the squeegee guys this, uh, these last couple of days. They better work hard. Mid-season form. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wonder if this salad's with low-fat dressing. We didn't, we didn't dive too far into it. <laughs> Got to give the man a little bit of something. His free throw is no good, but he gets his own rebounds. He thought about putting it in. Thompson puts it up. No good. And Bell rips it down for North Texas. Oh, you don't think the 6,900 mostly Purdue fans would have ripped the roof off? As much as we talked about Williams, Simmons got to get in the ball. Yeah. Simmons has some score tonight. He's over for two. Hamlet wants someone to come to the basketball. Ball is cut off by Hunter. Great hands. Here's Ivy into the open floor. Uses his body and 
throws up a prayer and his prayer was answered. All right, so here's the game reset. North Texas, nine team fouls. They have the possession arrow. Each team with two timeouts. Purdue just used one. Thompson will inbound to Ivy. Ivy's got 23. Ivy in the paint. Kicks it out to Hunter for three. No, no good. Williams with the rebound. Put back he is good. Back to a two-point game as we head toward one minute to play. And when you're trying to box out Williams, you have to gain on him and do your work early. You can't try to rebound when the ball touches the rim. You have to try to get in rebounding position once that shot is released. solid defense against McBride and Hamlet give him a lot of credit. Purdue uses another timeout. It's still a two-point game, 36.6 to play. North Texas is seeking its first ever win in the round of 64, up by two with 36.6 to play. All right, so Purdue used the timeout there, Coach. What is Matt Painter and his uh, his coaching staff because he he delegates defense coordinator offense coordinator what are they talking about here well the four time uh, Big Ten coach of the year in this situation we know he's definitely drawing up something where the ball's going to find its way in the hands of Ivy and if not Ivy or uh, Williams and one of the things you got to also think about is Gill is getting on the mm -hmm. off, attacking the offensive glass on a missed shot but yes, Coach Painter loves to delegate with the offensive and defensive coordinator. Yeah, and Micah. his offensive coordinator just recently got a head coach. Yeah, with Penn State, Micah Shrewsbury, there he is. Matt Painter said, he goes, listen, I tell my players not to have egos, to check them at the door. Several years ago, I felt like I needed to check him at the door. The LIV, the head coach at Notre Dame, her son, Jaden. 23 points. She getting a chance to watch her son play and really evolve unbelievably. Williams has the ball off to Hunter. Two point game. Williams down low. Under 30 to play. Here's your post up. Are they going to play single coverage? No double team. Yeah, the seal by Gillis. The putback by Williams. And North Texas uses a timeout. They're going to have to take a look at the clock. But this is what you just love about Williams. You know, you're trying to turn a bad night into a good night. He's, he's not making any excuses. Multiple jumps here. He misses the shot. He sticks with it. That's just leadership. And that's toughness on display. So he has a double-double. It's his 11th of the year. 10 points in the second half. Let's look at the clock because that's what they're trying to get set right now. It goes in at 21.3, and then the timeout is called, and then it kept, keeps on running. Tom, are you sure it was 21.3? Uh, I'm not exactly <laughs> sure, but I'm leaning on what I saw. <laughs> 21.3 at least. How about 11 offensive rebounds for Purdue in the second half? Yeah, that was one of the big points of emphasis for North Texas coming into this game. They knew they were, because of their lack of size that they were going to have to do a better job uh, rebounding the ball tonight, and they're getting out-rebounding by 10. All right, so 21.3 to play. We know North Texas likes to wind the shot clock under 10. They're content with taking a last-second shot, aren't they? Absolutely. In this situation, they should not try to start operating uh, but under seven seconds. You want to get the last shot. So when you initiate your play, start it sometime around seven, mm -hmm. and maybe you can give yourself an opportunity for an offensive rebound. Oh, you saw this coach in person, Javion Hamlet against Western Kentucky. This turned out to be the game winner that sent him to the NCAA tournament. Yep, I had a front row seat with my buddy Carter Blackburn. And, you know, that was his go-to move, that floater around the free throw line. Bassey couldn't get to it to right. block it. And uh, ball game. North Texas. Purdue tied at 61. Again, North Texas, four trips to the NCAA tournament. They've never won a game. 
They've been in games, but they've never won a game. Coach McCaslin said that he's doing all this not only for his program, for his family, but he said, listen, I, the Conference USA weighs on me also, the responsibility to win a game for Conference USA. And he said he has massive respect for all of the coaches and in the conference, and you're right. He said he's he has a great sense of yeah. responsibility representing this conference. All right, here we go. And you know what their motto is, the toughest team wins. That's right. The inbounds to Hamlet. So look for Hamlet to operate in the middle of the floor. I would be surprised if they tried to run something on the sideline. He's looking over at his coach, covered by Hunter, great defender. They go up top to Reese, shot fake. Ball is deflected away by Thompson, out of bounds, and it will be mean green ball with 1.6 to play. And that's why I said I would be surprised to run something on the sideline because you bring the sideline in the play as an extra, an extra defender. Purdue looked like they got, they tried to trap Hamlet. They got some deflection. Sometimes it's better off just to isolate Hamlin in the middle of the floor. Don't bring anybody up and just allow him to go one-on-one. -on -one. See, here it is. See, sometimes you can step on the side. Mm -hmm. And that's happened three times tonight. Yeah. They're looking at the clock to see how much time is left. James Breeding is over on the sidelines with Byron Jarrett. How about Hunter, though, coming yeah. out and trying to get his hand in the face, and then Thompson with the deflection. Thompson has been really good. Here. Really good. Yep, defensively. All right, so it's going to probably be close to two seconds, which is a lifetime to get a shot off. But you can look at trying to get maybe one of your back guys, big guys, off of a back screen going mm -hmm. towards the basket, and then another quick pin down to get the ball to one of your players, especially Hamlin in the middle of the floor. All right, so they're going to have Edie check in, I would think. So you think he's going to defend the inbounds? It's so important. Some coaches defend the inbound, some don't. But in this case, I think you would. I, I think it's going to depend on how much time is on the clock. Okay. Because you don't oh, want him defending the, the inbounds where you can get a quick pitch back to the guy gotcha. that took the ball. So I think they, they have the clock set to where they want. It's going to be North Texas ball. We know that. And 1.6 is what will read on the clock. And in this situation, Coach McCaslin, he wants Hamlin to take the ball out because you've got to get the ball in to have an opportunity there. A lot of times look down towards the corner by their bench. Free a shooter up here. It is right there. They go to Reese who lets it go. Off the glass, no good. And we are heading to overtime. 61. He got a good look. Got a good look. A lot of times the guy that's guarding the inbounder shades a little bit towards half court, and that's why that corner shot comes into play. Little curl here. Nice pass. Hamlet is also left-handed, so that was an easier pass for him with his left hand taking it out of bounds. Well, that's a good point. Cute play. Matt Painter says, all right, at this point, I'll take overtime. Tied up at 61 here in Indianapolis. Overtime is upon us right after this. Williams, he's come to life in the second half. 12 points, 10 rebounds, six offensive rebounds, and five assists for Matt Painter's team. And you know who else has come to life for Purdue? Isaiah Thompson. Yes, he has. <laughs> he's come to life. You know, he averages four points a game. He's got, you know, nine points, three for five from three. Sometimes you need an X factor when your best player's not having his best night. This is also the third overtime game of the day in the NCAA tournament. Here we go. Williams will jump center against Simmons. Fred Hampson to center court. Five minutes on the clock to decide who moves on. And Williams will tip it into the hands of Hunter. And Purdue controls it. I don't know if that was the best. That was jump not ball. the best jump ball. <laughs> <laughs> Williams looking for Ivy. Cut off by Reese. To Gillis. Ivy's got the hot hand. He has 23. Williams. He can hit that mid range jumper. It's not his best shot, and it's off the front of the rim. That's a win for North Texas. And, you know, they did a nice job of getting Williams off the post. Sometimes in 
those situations, Ivy tells Williams to repost. Mm -hmm. Back in there, deeper, force the defense to do something. Bell for three. It's good. North Texas up 64 61. Nine for 20 from beyond the arc this afternoon. <laughs> it's amazing. This guy, Bell, he's never lacking confidence. He was 0 for 4 from 3. Yep. And what a great time to make a three point shot. And then he deflects the ball and they get a steal. Three different mean green scores have reached 16 points today. It seemed like Bell is mm. at his best when. You know, just when you think he's going to shoot another break, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he comes up. Bell will inbound the basketball. Hunter is on Hamlet. Gillis will pick up Bell. Simmons and Williams are down low. Reese is covered by Thompson, and Ivy has McBride. Well, that just really loosens up the defense when other guys can make a shot. That. He said that he told his teammates that he needs help at one point this year. Here's Hamlet, the floater, and it is no good. Simmons is put back, no good. The ball knocked out of bounds. They're going to say Gillis topped it last. Good play for Hamlet. That's what we talked about at the end of regulation. He really doesn't need a pick and roll all the time. He's, he's good enough. Conference USA player of the year in 2020. Mm -hmm. Simmons uh, gets the roll. Bell is taking over in overtime with his defense. You know, he has two block shots. He's got a steal. Made a three point shot. Nice short pass. Ivy cut off by Simmons. Gave time for Reese to get back down to pick him up. Hunter to Williams. Williams keeps his. has scored all five points in this overtime, leading at 66-61. 13 seed is 3-5 in the last two years. Hamlin, he was just left open. And, and he made the decision in that situation. <laughs> you know, he's overpowered Thompson. Thompson is 6'1", 160 pounds. Hamlin said, you're just too small. Grant McCaslin took over the North Texas program four years ago. He talks about JV on Hamlet. He says, I don't know if I have coached a player who wants to be as great as him. Well, his floater is great. His floater is incredible. But look at in this situation, you know, earlier he just tried to face up and take Thompson off the dribble. But now he decided to, in honor of our guy, Charles Barkley. Mm. Mr. Charles Barkley, the round mound to rebound. Just back him down and just use your brute strength against him. And I guess we got to say something nice about him. He's a nice guy. The guards stick together. Yeah, that's right. Here's Ivy. And it's partially blocked by Bell. Ball is run down. Hunter. Still time on the shot clock. Ivy lets it go. No good. Too strong. Hunter again. Here's Thompson. Thompson to the corner. It was to Ivy. Ivy to the corner. Hunter for three. No good. And the rebound by Hamlet. He's got a double double. And I'm not saying in this situation that you want to just hold the ball. But you know, a minute and 35, the clock is your friend. You don't want to take the air out of it. You still want to be aggressive. But you don't have to go too fast. They are one of those slower teams. As far as possessions go, it's down to five. Hamlet got some separation from Thompson. Bell lets it go. No good. It's a shot clock violation. Did not hit a rim. And now Purdue will get it back. And see on that possession, if Hamlet's going to back him now, Bell's got to clear the right. corner. Because you got to take that extra defender out of there so it won't be as crowded. 
you, you get communication on offense. A lot of times, you know, we always talk about communicating defensively. Mm -hmm. You need communication on offense. That ball did not hit the rim. No, did not. At the bottom of the backboard. They just conferred with the scorer's table, and they said, nope, it did not hit the rim. All right, so Gillis will inbound. Purdue is 0 for 5, coach, yeah. in overtime. And unlike some of our games last night, you know, teams got a different philosophy. You know, certain teams are using a little 2 2 one. Yeah, slow it up. Yeah, slow it up a little bit. Williams with the offensive rebound. Out to Hunter for three. Hunter short. Ball is loose. Out of bounds. It'll be mean green basketball with 101 to play. Now, initially, it looked like Gillis came flying in here. There's Gillis's hand. Did Bell hit it last? That's close. That's close. Looked like it could have been Bell. Yeah. There it is with his right hand. I think Gillis oh. is the last one. Gillis said that Bell hit it. But sometimes it's... Referees think about the trajectory of the right. ball, which direction. Looked like Bell's hand was swiping towards the baseline. Yeah, I have to say that replay, it almost does look like Bell hit it last. Right there, right Gillis. Right there. That's what they're looking That's at. That's hard to tell. Yeah. tonight on replays time are you one for one um, well since I don't remember <laughs> I will say that I'm uh, oh no oh for one I missed that the okay. violation the shot clock violation so, so you're saying this is off Gillis or, or I'm saying it's off Gillis and I'm saying it's off Bay. okay <laughs> AJ what do you think you're down there what do you I know you're on the other side of the floor what do you think so you got to break this tie for us Steratore, our rules official, is uh, watching. What do you think there, Gino? I've got to come in and try to break the tie here, guys, <laughs> and I'm going to go with Gillis on this one. <laughs> I think the shot from behind Bell and Gillis, if you watch that to me, that looks like Bell touches, but Gillis continues through with his hand, and I have that one finishing off of Gillis's, uh, the fingers off of Gillis's right hand. Well, Gene, I'm going to say that you're right on, because that's what I said, too. Avery was wrong. You, <laughs> I you thought you'd agree right. with me on that one, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the official. You know, I think it's also to be to be noted at this point that after they look at that in the close-up, they also want to confirm where the clock is right. as well when the ball touches out of bounds, which you usually don't get on the close-up ISO. So that's what takes the officials a little longer at times to do the review. Get the out of bounds, and then let's make sure we confirm the clock at the same time. All right, so just to clean it up a little bit, and Gene, thank you very much. You've been working hard all day, and we appreciate it. Why, why are you thinking? Because he, he, he chose why? what I chose, yeah. which was the right decision. I was going to buy Gene <laughs> if you would agree with me. <laughs> All right, so this is the, they ruled it was Purdue ball. Yeah. All right, so now they've switched it. It is North Texas basketball. They're saying that Gillis touched it last. All right, so 101, Avery, put your coaching hat on here. And now they're going to, I guess, check again to see what the clock is. While they do this, what would you do if you're Purdue, 101, down 68-61? Well, you have to foul immediately. Um, so, you know, and the, that's the 1A. That's the easy one. Okay. And sometimes, you know, different teams have different philosophies. They'll trap you and try to get a jump ball, get a steal, and then on, on the first pass or second pass, they'll foul. Okay. Some teams like to some teams like to face guard you and switch everything and try to force it over the top. We'll see whether Purdue puts somebody on the inbounder. Sometime they'll try to play three against two. So Williams here, he's going to guard the inbounder. And now you see Purdue's face guarding Hamlet and, and McBride. So they'll switch and deny. There's your switch. And there's the attempted deny. Hamlet to Reese. And now they have to foul. One minute left and counting. Yeah. Thompson finally does. And I, 
I think philosophically they wanted to try to get a jump ball there because Reese thought they were going to foul. So catch him off guard. Catch him off guard. All right, so Reese to the free throw line. I'm still disappointed I didn't get it. I don't like the you've gotten, a, you've gotten a lot right <laughs> over the last couple days. Here's Reese the line. First free throw of the night for him. 74% for the year, and he makes it. You know what it is? I just started wearing glasses a couple of years ago. Maybe I need yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is a huge free throw right here to make it another possession. Three possession game. Another possession of three threes. It's a nine-point game, 70 to 61. So now you need three threes if you're Purdue. Ivy trying for one. It's no good. Rims out. Williams saves it. Gets to Ivy again. Let's it fly. Short again. Rebound by Hamlet. And look who got the rebound. Yeah. Wow. Hamlet's feeling it now. And look at the North Texas mean green faithful mm. right over our shoulders. They are making a lot of noise. They brought a pretty good crowd. They sure did. And you're talking about two teams now that potentially that, you know, Purdue loses Ohio State. Right, two Big Ten teams. Wow. That played each other in the right. Big Ten tournament. Hamlet converts the first one. Dad loves it. He's loved every bit of this. He walked by us before the game. He loved that, too. <laughs> he was very confident. Second free throw. It's good. 20 points, 11 rebounds for Hamlet. Ivy will bring it up. 72-61. Matches the largest lead of the night for North Texas. Ooh. Gillis for three. It's good. Purdue has one timeout left, but only 26.1 to play. It's all about getting the ball to your best free throw shooters. They get it into Hamlet, who's yep. bumped out of bounds. Matt Painter can't believe it. He thought that he was heading out of bounds. Yeah, he was definitely bumped. We don't need to get Gene in for this one. <laughs> that was a foul. <laughs> Last two games for Purdue in overtime. They've been outscored 26 to 9. The Ohio State game and now this one. And to the free throw line. We'll go Hamlet. And North Texas, you know, they're 10 and 1 this year when they score 70 plus points. Mm. Trying to add to their lead here. And Hamlet, 22. Dad is loving it. You could probably add another line to that sweatshirt. <laughs> NCAA tournament victory. 25.4 to play. 10 point game. 74 64. And all of the North Texas players, they always talk about how Coach Grant talks about winning the conference tournament and advancing in the NCAA tournament. Every practice, every shoot around, every video session, at, you know, Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's all they talk about. And Coach McCaslin told us that after the two losses to UAB to end the regular season, including one on senior night, Hamlet came to him and said, don't worry, Coach, we got this. He makes another free throw. He's 7 for 7 from the free throw line of 23 points. He said, Coach, we got this. We're going to win four games in four days. We're going to go to the NCAA tournament, win the conference tournament. And now they're 16 seconds away from advancing to the second round. And you're absolutely right, Tom. You can win four games in four days. That's enough. That's pretty. That's impressive. Ivy, three-pointer again. No good. Williams with the rebound. He's going to go right back up with a one-handed jam. It's 76-69. It's going to take too many of those, though, for Purdue to get back in this. It'll be North Texas ball. And something Javion Hamlet mentioned, he said, Coach, we take pride in our scouting. Yeah. And you got to give them credit. I think the tone was set early in this game when they basically neutralized Williams. Yeah, no doubt. He had a, Williams had a much better second half, but uh, North Texas, man, they, they 
executed their scouting report and game plan with precision. Reese to the free throw line. And all of Hamlet's relatives, his parents, he said he has his parents, his aunts, uncles, <laughs> friends, all from Memphis, Tennessee. Region. They made the trip, they drove up. Second shot is good. But the Bean Green is dominating the free throw line. 13 of 15. Five seconds left. Ivy across midcourt. He'll let another one go. No good. And it's the Bean Green wrecking machine. The 13 seed. North Texas Bean Green. Their first ever NCAA victory as they knock off the four seed Purdue 78-69. In overtime. Yeah, it's time for some photos, and it's time to celebrate. Wow, and what does our buddy John Rothstein say? This is March. This is March. <laughs> so the South region, Baylor and Wisconsin in one, North Texas, and we shall see in the other. Pretty incredible. Four scores in double digits. Tournament games continue now on TBS, CBS, and True TV. Coming up on TNT, it's Winthrop versus Villanova. For Avery, for A.J. Ross, I'm Tom McCarthy. We'll send you to our studio for Capital One Tournament Central after these messages.